Alrighty, hello everyone, folks, and welcome to a beginner's guide to Hanging Gardens and the final boss. So, the good news is, if you've been told that you need to explore, you know, all ends of the earth, or go do some insane amount of grinding to actually go complete this place, good news is, you don't have to do any of that. Realistically, whatever party got you here, you're one quick shop visit away uh, from being able to complete this fight. And realistically, you might already have all of the pieces that you need already just sitting there in your party. So here's the thing. A lot of folks will get to this point and think that they need to grind, that they need to, uh, again, get some kind of insanely powerful items, trying to overpower what is effectively a puzzle boss. See, no matter what amount of power you get on your team, realistically speaking, A, pretty much the best, uh, best options that you have for dealing with a lot of the stuff that he does is already going to be in your party, and B, well, he's going to come in with all of the same strengths you do, uh, barring a couple of exceptions. So let's go ahead and break this down real quick. So there's two unique classes that you could have gotten uh, if you are already at this point. And uh, you're basically either going to have Lord available on your uh, main character, uh, or you're going to have Princess available for Kashua. It just it depends entirely on who's waiting for their coronation, right? So... These are the two classes that, by themselves, are going to be the easiest answer to this particular puzzle. So this phase, uh, this fight has uh, two phases to it. Um, essentially, you're looking at a case where the first one uh, is going to be testing to see what, how well you know your own weaknesses, how well you can deal with, you know, your own party, and then the second phase is seeing how much you've learned about debuffs up to this point. So let's go ahead and talk about the easiest way. If you happen to be on Lord uh, route uh, here, it's really as simple as taking uh, taking your denim here, and then thinking about what classes you have available and what they can provide. So uh, to start off with the Lord itself, which won't be on this particular list, so we'll just go ahead and use this uh, to mouse over real quick. Um, the Lord by itself uh, has one skill that's unique to it from the get-go, and that's going to be First Aid. It's going to be a 10% uh, health recovery per round. That's going to be our ticket to simply soloing this guy. Uh, so if you are running Lord, uh, you can go ahead and switch them over to, let's say, either a Ninja or Knight uh, for either Steel Stance or uh, Phalanx. Uh, both of them are going to be uh, uh, functional for this particular thing. Uh, Phalanx is going to be the better overall damage reduction move. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Steel Stance from the Ninja is if you're feeling a bit more confident uh, in your offensive capabilities here and you want to try and cut him down a little bit faster, a combination of Steel Stance and Lombardia uh, will allow you to keep countering while attacking him. But personally, I would recommend the slow and steady approach uh, through Phalanx. You'll then also be taking Conserve MP from the Valkyrie. And then ideally, if you happen to have a Cleric Mark, a lot of folks won't at this point because it's not a cl uh, class that many folks change into. But if you have a class mark for a Cleric on hand, pick up Mother's Mercy, which will get rid of debuffs at the start of your turn. Otherwise, go ahead and uh, you've pretty much definitely got an, uh, an accidental... Uh, um, uh, conserve RT available uh, from the Wizard or Enchantress, um, and then you just go ahead and pop that on there. Uh, now, what this creates is a situation where you've got a unit that will uh, that will effectively be able to uh, to attack with spells, uh, sit there tanking all damage that comes their way, and simply recover off any damage that comes from him. Now, an interesting little thing that happens here uh, is if you've uh, if you've gotten up to this point, uh, there's a pretty reasonable possibility that you've gotten uh, some summons as drops on your way through Hanging Gardens. Those first uh, 15 or so maps um, will have a pretty solid chance of dropping some summons for you. I know my first time through, I didn't end up getting them, and then the second time through, I ended up getting three of them. Um, so I would say the odds are pretty decent. Uh, most subsequent times that uh, that have gone through there just to test, uh, typically one or two seem to be about the average. Uh, now, here's the thing. When it comes to your spells of different types, just know that they are not all inherently better or worse by themselves. The situation that you're in will dictate whether or not something is going to be useful. Um, you have to get that notion of like being strictly about power out of your head, because that's not really what we're about here. So, if just kind of look through your spells, any attack spell will do the job just fine, realistically speaking, just go for anything that costs uh, less than 56 MP. Technically, you can generate, uh, I've seen it generate up to 62 before, uh, through, well, actually, Conserve MP is free, I don't know what I'm talking about there. Whatever, just put any attack spell on him. If you've got Lord, like, hell, if you've even got Apocryphos, that'll do the job just fine. Just any attack spell. Now, the reason that we do this is for the same reason that summons are considered overpowered. 
Namely, that uh, magic is by itself not inherently super powerful, it's more so unresisted. It does have a decent bit of bunch behind it, but uh, typically it's less affected uh, by things that will affect your offense. So your second phase is going to be a case where you are going to be hit by fear and stun constantly. Now if you've got Mother's Mercy uh, from the Cleric there, you'll just quickly be able to shake this off. Uh, this is a skill that at the start of your turn uh, will allow you to remove all debuffs at once. Uh, this is the best debuff clearing move that there is. Now, you might have noticed up to this point that this is a strategy that employs entirely automatic skills, but what about that randomness, right? It's okay, uh, we have a way to sort that out. Uh, for now, what you need to know is the important pieces are that you have a way to constantly give yourself free MP, uh, they have a way to recover, uh, which again, just use first aid, this is just for the purpose of having something to mouse over, um, and then uh, Mother's Mercy for getting rid of debuffs, and then uh, Phalanx for giving you that armor. Again, Steel Stance can do the job if you're feeling a bit more risky that day, but it's up to you. The ideal setup spell-wise would be something like a heal, a boon of swiftness, and then a um, uh, uh, then your attack spell of choice. And ideally, I would recommend if you happen to have uh, Instill Dark or Instill Light, both of them will help you out here, simply because both of their big attack moves are going to be light and dark respectively. Either one will do the job, and having an Instill will give you a shield versus that thing. And especially if you happen to have Instill Dark, uh, that should give you more likelihood of running into the Light spell, which will generally be more about uh, just damage instead of debuffs, but again, we've ba basically already dealt with the debuffs, we've already dealt with the lack of MP, so we're pretty much good to go here. Alright, so, if you're doing that solo route, you don't have to worry about his uh, Condemn whatsoever, you don't have to uh, worry about uh, getting uh, getting ruined in any way. Um, in reality, what you really want to do uh, weapon-wise, because you may notice that we haven't really been, you know, haven't been talking about the, uh, the gear selection, just put the hardest armor that you've got, as well as uh, something like, let's say, the Lombardia for free damage, and then you can go ahead and put a shield on the off slot. So this will become relevant in just a moment, because uh, we're going to show how to uh, go about this through the Princess, or if you happen to have lost both along the way somehow, uh, how to just kind of deal with this in general. Okay, because there's a lot of little mechanical fudgery that uh, uh, that can come up here that can be pretty uh, pretty darn useful. So let's go ahead and get into this fight and talk about uh, why we're bringing the party that we're bringing. Just know that this is, for all intents and purposes, a puzzle. This is not something that you're going to go in wanting raw power. You want to achieve as much as you can with as little as you can. The, uh, the entire kind of name of the game here is Restraint, so if you're going in with a full party, expect to try to exert some control over this, uh, uh, this fight here. Uh, try to, uh, you're going in here expecting to use different mechanics other than damage, because everybody can do damage, any class can do damage, it depends entirely on the situation that you're putting them into, and this is going to be a collection of just kind of demos, as it were. So, we're going to go about this the way that I personally like doing it my first time around, because I figured, you know what, every previous version of this boss was simply always handled by cheesing items, and for once, for once, just going in and going about it as a fair fight is actually a legitimate strategy, and I really, really, really was excited about that uh, when, you know, when this all came out. So, here's effectively what we're, uh, what we're bringing and why. Again, adjust your party accordingly, like, the, the entire purpose of this party is debuffs and control. Like, you'll notice right here, those numbers are looking mighty scary, right? Those are, those are big numbers flying off the guy. But, our party is entirely built around the idea of mitigating his offense, and essentially uh, controlling, uh, well, controlling our own. So, we're gonna go ahead and uh, throw out a, a Breach on that guy, we've uh, kept our Breach spear around. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and attack as well, um, and also, since we noticed he spawned around the front, we can try to uh, trick him into getting a second Breach applied on an off turn. Didn't quite happen, but that's fine. So. Uh, we have a lot of items that have been given to us along the way, so we're going to go ahead and uh, use some of these Fruit of the Seraphs. Uh, just because this is going to be a long fight, uh, if you have Glass Pumpkins, if you have visited Palace of the Dead, uh, or if you have other MP regeneration items, uh, you know, feel free to go ahead and use those. The important part here is to pay attention to our debuffs. So I've brought a wide selection of them, uh, but right here uh, we see that this guy is going to be a threat to us because we know how to deal with our own party. Uh, we've, in many cases, uh, nerfed uh, the uh, offensive portions of our own party. Um, but uh, we know that this guy still can be hitting us pretty hard, and that's not damage that we want to continue taking. So we want to apply as many debuffs as we can. Uh, there's many debuffs that are 
either unresistible, unlikely to be resisted, or just plain can't be it can't be avoided in any way. Um, and well, you might notice that the skill that most bosses will carry with them is going to be deathproof. Many will immediately assume that this means that they're immune to all debuffs, but it's only the stuff that's on there. They can't be knocked backwards, they can't be cursed, they can't be stopped, they can't be charmed, they can't be put to sleep, petrified, or poisoned. The poison is because they have a really high health bar, and poison melts high health bars, it's always 10%, so if something has, say, 4,000 health like he does in Phase 2, that is 400 damage that they're taking multiple times around. This is why we always keep that around in Palace of the Dead <laughs> from various sources, because frankly, poison is insanely overpowered versus heavies. Anyway, uh, petrification, uh, honestly, it's kind of whatever. It's mostly because petrification and stop used to be uh, quite a bit more broken in uh, previous versions. But let's go ahead and look at our party here. Uh, we've brought uh, wizards primarily for two purposes. Their only actual direct attack source is going to be cudgel finishers. Despite the fact that cudgel finishers don't typically get to shine that often, there are many cases where there are dark aligned bosses. Every cudgel finisher is light affiliated, as is the uh, as are the final finishers for swords, one-handed katanas, and blowguns. Now the thing is, by themselves, they're going to run into the same issue that archers run into, namely that they have a very high damage potential, but kind of shitty penetration. So the reason that this becomes important is because we want to make sure uh, that uh, that we're you know actually getting that damage in. This is why we're again bringing in a lot of debuffs. Now. You might have noticed right there, uh, we have multiple units that are actually coming in with, again, you know, various uh, types of debuffs here because we want to abuse their own units against them. We want to send their units off to the side to go fight, uh, fight amongst themselves rather than going after us. So we're going to go ahead and use our free casts here to go charm a few units. If you're wondering about the low hit odds, uh, realistically, you might as well uh, just keep on spamming this and it'll eventually keep on going. You do have ways to guarantee it. Uh, like, for example, I have a uh, archer with eagle eye here on the party, standing right next to uh, this guy over here who's got the war dart blowgun, uh, which will then go and uh, give him uh, eagle eye uh, when the uh, skill uh, turns on, which will guarantee a charm whenever he fires that dart. Anyway, so you might notice that, again, we we talked earlier about the fact that uh, this, uh, this party will have a whole lot of... Uh, a whole lot of auto skills that are doing a whole lot of things. But those are supposed to be RNG, right? I mean, you're trying to just rush through this first fight, right? That's it's kind of a, a, a big part of it, isn't it? Well, essentially what we're looking at here is a case where we can have more or less infinite time to set up during this first round if we play our cards right. So we're going to be doing a few things. Uh, for one thing, we're going to be setting up some defensive buffs. Uh, uh, if you have a, something like a Swordmaster, Fortify will help out a lot here. Uh, Resilience will help out a lot here. Um, but really, uh, you want to try and just send every unit against another. If you have stun options available, it's definitely a fantastic option to go and slow them down. And you want to try to plug up those front areas so that they're attacking you as little as possible. So... What we're going to do is we're basically going to use this time to break their party. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use things like uh, like poison here, uh, see what uh, kind of stuff we have uh, decent hit odds against. Uh, we're going to use uh, things like our ranged attacks to see what, uh, what kind of numbers we can throw out there. Um, if you're wondering what the deal is, uh, like in terms of the debuffs I was talking about, like look at the difference right here. In terms of the normal damage that this unit would be taking versus how much they'd be taking with breach. Breach is absolutely massive in terms of how much you can put out there. So while cards and things like that are certainly powerful, uh, something like a Breach will be absolutely insane uh, for getting our numbers through. So Breach, again, comes from multiple different sources. Uh, you can get it from items uh, like a Dynast King's Mead, which you probably have at least some of in your party. Um, you can use things like... Um, I uh, use things like a Claymore or a Zweihander or a Volge. Uh, there's a lot of different options that can be uh, that, that can be brought to bear here. So while I'm tempted to go pick up that skill card over there for now, that uh, Terranite is sticking and holding a uh, holding a unit in place. So for now, we won't be doing any of that. Uh, there might also be some uh, some stuff that looks a little bit questionable on these units. Like for example, shots. Aren't you supposed to just throw those? Well, right here, I went ahead and uh, I have a knight set up right here in between my squishies, uh, who's hopefully going to be uh, tanking some damage for everybody through guardian force. Uh, but the reason that he's actually got that um, 
uh, that he's got that uh, uh, a shot on him is if his phalanx triggers, uh, he can actually basically just go punch somebody in the face with that for free. So it's just a handy thing to do there. So what we're going to be doing right here is using this griffin's high health and relatively low defense to start spreading some stone off in the backfield here. Just going to start sending him back there. Um, we're going to attempt to use a stun to try and uh, cause this guy to, you know, do exactly that right there to make sure that he can't attack because few things can actually resist stun and resist is not immunity. Uh, almost nothing has a stun immunity. Um, stuff like false strike, stuff like breach has absolutely no way uh, to be immune against. Um, and additionally, uh, stuff like uh, slow, few things can resist, like this guy can be affected by slow as well. Uh, and if you're running something like concentration, this means that you're going to be seeing more of that on hand. Um, additionally, uh, you can see right here, despite the fact that he's not even breached yet, uh, she's able to do over 200 to this guy because those elemental bonuses are huge. Uh, they're a really, really big benefit. Um, and many will simply not see that up to this point. They just assume that there's no benefit to uh, uh, to the elements because, you know, they probably tried them on a spell or something, and they're like, well, I guess that's about that. I guess I don't need to be trying this. So additionally, stuff like False Strike, 20% doesn't really sound like much, but it is massive when it happens. Now... The units that you get here will vary. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different ways that this potential situation can play out. Um, again, if you have Lord, you should just be doing the solo. It's very easy to do with uh, solo Lord. Um, but if you are, you know, in a position like this, uh, where you're coming in and you've got uh, a princess on your team, uh, Princess's Whim is going to be one of your best options for clearing out debuffs. And right now, all I'm really doing is just attempting to slow down and clear out these uh, units ahead of us, so that we can continue uh, continue on our merry way here. So we're going to continue trying to throw out uh, more stuns off this short bow. Uh, every weapon attack has a set chance to happen, just so you know. Um, it really doesn't matter how much damage they're doing or any of that. Um, as long as it's hitting, it's rolling for a chance for the thing to happen. It's just a flat chance to happen. So just so you're aware, your damage doesn't really matter. The reason that in many cases it feels like damage is mattering is because anything with a guaranteed chance, like your tremendous shots and what have you, are going to uh, uh, to guarantee the effect on their debuffs because they have that 100% ability. Uh, now we have something like Eagle Eye that's gone ahead and triggered on our archer here, so we're going to go ahead and move her back, uh, move her out of the way, because she's always going to be a tempting target for this guy with his uh, dark moves. Uh, she stumbled in this case, but she's got a balder bow on her uh, in order to uh, uh, set up silence so that we can silence him and force him into physical melee attacks, uh, which should limit uh, where he can actually attack. At the same time, we can just have the, uh, uh, the back row party clear each other out. Um, we see that uh, we've rolled our concentration, so we want to go ahead and apply the shadow bind if we can. We don't have our shadow bind ready as of yet, unfortunately. So instead, we're going to attempt to uh, get this unit on our side. We see that he's about to act, so we'll go ahead and over go over here with our charm dart. Uh, we got the charm, we got the stun, and now he's going to go ahead and attack their backfield instead. Realistically, as long as they're not attacking us, that's fantastic. We just want to keep sending them off to go attack each other. The, the whole point of control is defense. All these problems will definitely vary. Uh, right now we have a uh, Condemn on the field, so we'll just simply go and uh, throw this uh, Absolution out there and uh, get right back to reviving. If any of our units are downed, that's no longer any of our problem. So from here we just continue as we've been continuing. Uh, we just try to eliminate as many of their units as we can. Uh, currently they're all attacking this one, so we'll just go ahead and assist them on their way. That is one very, very lucky unit, I have to say. Uh, currently, she's rolled multiple uh, stumbles uh, from the units attacking her, and uh, additionally, I uh, managed to go and uh, roll that parry as well. But it happens. Now, this is part of the reason that we throw that griffin out into the backfield. Uh, he, With his high health, uh, he's going to survive a lot of attacks, and given the fact that we're not relying on him for damage, he's going to be distracting all of them while we're uh, dealing with these problems over here. Now, something like Fear is going to be an incredibly powerful debuff, because uh, as we see over in this direction, uh, we, have a, uh, we have a case where this guy is going to be taking intense amounts of punishment just due to that Fear. And additionally, you can see this stronger unit, uh, given his, uh, his higher, uh, uh, higher affinity uh, here with his, uh, uh, with his attack, uh, he's going to be able to hit particularly hard versus all these guys with this, uh, uh, with this move. 
Now, instead, we're actually going to take this over here to this griffin. Uh, I want to pick up this critical critical card on him as well. Hopefully this ends up uh, rolling. That would be pretty handy. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, roll this uh, roughly 800 damage on this guy. Could have potentially gone up to uh, 1600 there. Uh, when it comes to something with high health, usually you want to try to throw as big of uh, numbers out there as you can. If you really can't take a sizable chunk off their bar, it really isn't even worth attacking them with anything other than poison. But at this point, uh, we see that uh, we've had one unit go down, and this will certainly happen. Uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, uh, re-up uh, re the charm on their uh, cleric over here. Interestingly enough, uh, due to the fact that the cleric will have, um, uh, will have access to resurrection, uh, if she is in a position uh, to go ahead and uh, resurrect uh, one of your units, uh, they, will, uh, they will attempt to do so. Um, realistically, it's a situation that doesn't come up that often, but either way. So we'll go ahead and apply our Eagle Eye on here, and due to the fact that uh, she was knocked out and came back, uh, we'll be able to apply that Silence No Trouble this time around, so there we go, we'll go ahead and throw that on him. And now all he can do is physical attacks, and reasonably speaking, he'll probably go after one of the clerics. Uh, we'll go ahead and use their cleric to heal our own guys up here. And if we wanted to at any point, we also could go ahead and throw these shots out here. These shots will do a flat amount of damage, that's why we brought them along. Anyone can use them, and they will scale up uh, based off of weapon skills. Now, in this particular case, I actually forgot to take his um, uh, his uh, necklace off, or not his necklace, but his earrings off. So those earrings by themselves are boosting their damage by over 100 here, uh, because this, again, scales off of weapon skills, so it's a completely different situation. But either way, uh, we'll uh, you know we'll go ahead and leave them on there. They scale up with uh, both your weapon skill as well as any physical up cards that are obtained. That's actually part of the reason that we're going to take the extra time to go ahead and set this up a little bit early. Um, and additionally, he's going to use his eagle eye to go drop that stun on that cleric over there. And as you can see, we have very little that we actually have to uh, deal with on our own end. Now we're just going and uh, dealing with all of these uh, uh, problems as they come, and you know, all slow and steady like. Go ahead and uh, throw out a little bit of a major heal here. Uh, we don't have to worry about healing this guy because we want to clear this whole area. We want to uh, collect some cards to make the second phase easier on ourselves. As you can see, despite the fear inflicted on the uh, bird up there, he still is continuing to, uh, to hold up exceptionally well. And finally, we'll just go ahead and drop a uh, poison over on their version of the bird here, which will then melt away his health. Go ahead and pick up a uh, an NMP card on our uh, knight here, hopefully uh, creating a situation where he will uh, end up um, uh, uh, hopefully having uh, some more uh, finishers available for the second phase. But uh, let's see, are you charmed or are you charmed? No, but so we'll just go ahead and attempt to lay the uh, stun on those two as well as pick up a card. If you're running heavier units, uh, physical and crit cards are going to be very handy uh, versus them. Uh, actually, beast units oftentimes uh, get un kind of uh, kind of left out of this fight and assumed that they don't do anything. Um, but I I know my first time around, I ended up picking up multiple uh, physical up cards on the uh, Griffin, who ended up doing a fantastic job throughout this entire endeavor. Anyway, let's see whose turns are coming up. Uh, we got Denim. Where is their Denim at? He's over in that direction. Uh, well, this is not guaranteed by any means. We still might as well at least attempt it, uh, kind of see what this ends up giving us. We got Denim and the Birdman. He doesn't seem to have uh, any line of sight on uh, on Denim. Uh, the Birdman, uh, kind of similar situation. So let's see, who can we potentially get with his dart? It's probably worth uh, attempting to get you. Actually, actually no, he's already uh, uh, he's already affected. So we can attempt to go for you instead, see if we get that charm off. We got the Silence, so at least he won't be casting towards anyone. Uh, their denim is going and attempting to inflict a breach, and they've got a, a dark weight uh, that's going and uh, firing on their own griffin. Kashua suddenly realizes what's going on here. We get uh, some of those aversion uh, fades right there. Uh, we get Lucky Star going and boosting everybody's luck. You know, it's unclear exactly uh, what uh, luck will do in any particular situation, but it's a nice handy thing to have. Additionally, we see that we have a uh, Ice Requiem uh, all set up for her, but we're not going to bother with that in this case. Now we're just going to go ahead and uh, use the sword to resurrect our uh, uh, our enchantress over here. We probably should just be waiting and uh, conserving our resources, letting the uh, uh, letting the uh, uh, the uh, clerics do their job in this particular case. But we're going to attempt to get them set up so that we don't have to worry about it later. Anyway. Let's see, we got a Raining Blows that'll come up over here. She does have a crit. Uh, that might actually be 
a pretty decent whack there, because we got 260 plus potentially another 260. Would be one poison tick if this ends up critting, so, you know, we might as well try it. So there we go, we got the uh, 130 plus 260, so it should be two poison ticks uh, for him to be done. Uh, as far as her skills go, she's got uh, Conserve RT and Concentration. Um, so we'll go ahead and actually uh, let her pick up at least uh, one auto skill over here. Uh, which should uh, let her uh, meditate roll, which should allow her finishers to roll, and allow her finishers to crit, maybe pick up one more fizz card down the road. You know, we'll kind of play that by ear as we go along here. Go ahead and throw out a uh, major heal in this direction. Uh, whenever Mother's Blessing decides to uh, roll, that'll end up giving us uh, double healing on those particular turns. Uh, one auto skill card can make that uh, pretty much happen all the time. So it's nice and cozy there. Uh, their units, again, are still focusing on this one griffin off in the background. And that, that unit, honestly, can be anything. Anything with a high health bar, you know, relatively low defense. These are something uh, that you would generally just feel out, but either way, it's just good information to have. So we'll go ahead and uh, just pop their, uh, uh, pop their enchantress real quick, get one more unit off the field. Uh, they're going to get their apostate, they're going to get their evade, all of that kind of stuff going. He's going to throw out some meaty numbers on the, on the bird who is still continuing to just kind of do their thing back there. Additionally, fear uh, does actually affect uh, uh, does actually affect uh, health steals. So one useful thing is to go drop an enfeeble uh, plus a um, uh, plus a fear onto a unit uh, for potentially say 500 uh, worth of health steal. Uh, pretty much the uh, the cudgel finisher uh, can set up for that quite well. In terms of how hard this guy hits, if you're ever wondering why he's dropping those massive numbers on some units and not others, while the cleric's defenses are relatively weak, again, he is multiplying all of that uh, on account of his uh, uh, on account of his uh, elemental bonus versus that unit. So we're going to reapply that uh, that attack right there. His next attack is almost surely uh, going to go for that uh, archer over there, and this again gives us a bit more control over the fight. Uh, because we're, what we're looking at here is a situation where, like, we know that he's almost certainly going to attack certain units at certain times. And, like, this just kind of helps us out in general over knowing where those attacks are going to land. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, boost up our cleric here, drop a BOS on her. And he'll go ahead and uh, pick up a physical up card for later, while a uh, something like a crit or a skill card might be more useful in his case. You know, we'll uh, we'll deal with that as time, co as, uh, time goes on. Anyway... For the time being, though, I'll go ahead and uh, probably go just pick up this luck card. His health is still looking pretty good. So we'll probably just attack one of you over here. He's still hit by fear at the moment, so we'll just go ahead and strip off one of your defense layers. That might not be uh, strictly necessary, but we'll deal with that as it comes. Anyway, there's our Meditate. Uh, we'll go ahead and apply our uh, uh, Absolution in this case, because uh, uh, Condemn is still in effect. We won't be able to resurrect just quite yet, but uh, we can uh, go deal with a few other things in the meantime. Uh, like, for example, since she's less likely to be attacked, we can just go ahead and charge her up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and burn through some of these uh, fancier items, because we won't really uh, need them uh, later on. Anyway, uh, we see that their archer's turn is coming up, so next order of business is just going to be to uh, go and try to get her on our team. So we can go ahead and take our uh, charm shot over here go over in this direction and uh, we would prefer to stay on this side of the uh, of the uh, kind of Stonehenge looking situation if we can Let's see we get a pretty decent shot on her and see if we get her on our team here yep we rolled the charm and there we go uh, see it helps when you turn the entire team to yourself she's gonna go ahead and roll a stun on that guy that's another one of the reasons that she's got that as her offhand uh, uh, weapon there uh, we're going to use the fact that uh, it has uh, neutral finishers which allow her light elements to sort of fill in those neutral finishers um, on top of the fact that uh, she's going to um, uh, that uh, she's going to uh, essentially use that uh, whenever charmed to attack her own units. We're going to go and attempt to inflict a false strike on this guy, hopefully causing him to miss every now and then. Uh, again, false strike doesn't seem like much on his own, but uh, when you start seeing those blocks coming in is definitely when you start noticing that stuff. Now, unfortunately, that uh, that charm ended up going away, so we do want to consider dealing with her pretty soonish. But either way, she's not the uh, the biggest threat in the world at the moment. But uh, let's go ahead and see what kind of tools we have available on here. Uh, we would probably want a resurrection kind of soonish, and we also know that uh, this one's almost certainly taking the next attack from Dorgi. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, charge her up in this particular case. 
Uh, since again, he's going to be going for that element, uh, this should allow her to survive that attack. Just again, giving us a bit more control over the situation. All right, as they continue just attacking and attacking and attacking, one heal item will undo all of those actions that they've just taken. One little uh, random pause later. Let's see, does he have his concentration ready? Uh, not quite yet, so we'll just go ahead and throw this uh, short bow over in this direction. Guarantee the stun over here, so stun and silence will absolutely neuter his first form. Uh, pretty easy to uh, take care of there. Uh, with the griffin now running low, that's why he has a uh, healing essence on him. He's going to go and uh, do uh, one full heal along the way. And with these guys all nice and lined up over in this direction, we'll just go ahead and nuke those real quick. Uh, not a whole lot of recovery coming out of their team, considering that part of it is working for us at the moment. So over time, uh, we're going to want to uh, pick up cards and things, but they're very, very, very distracted at the moment, so that's particularly handy. So, next order of business, let's see, we got a hit here, we got a hit here, and we can go ahead and probably set these guys up with a pressure whirl. Uh, when it comes to this right here, you might notice that they're still taking quite a hefty bit of extra damage. Just basically his personal element uh, will uh, will end up uh, stepping in at this point. So both versus uh, light and dark, he's got options. So, uh, what we're actually going to do is uh, have him step over in this direction. I'm uh, going to go ahead and have him set up a pressure whirl. Uh, just so he can hit all of them at once. So we'll go ahead and make that happen. And uh, he's going to go ahead and one-shot the cleric because uh, he rolled the crit. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, have you probably... Uh, we're going to we're gonna see if he ends up rolling his stun. Uh, d it doesn't actually look like he has, uh, has stun anymore. Shook it off at some point. So he's just going to sit over here and um, well, he's going to go ahead and pick up this uh, skill card because he doesn't want them to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and pick that up and move him in that direction. Uh, that guy's going to meditate, he's going to attempt to attack, and as previously mentioned, uh, that will cause her to survive that attack. And additionally, uh, due to the fact that she's light element, she's got these uh, uh, extra finishers here. Uh, this will mean that her dagger finishers will do a decent bit extra. Um, in this case, uh, we don't exactly want her having, uh, having any basic attacks, but what we are going to do is uh, go over here and just attempt to, uh, to use that uh, shadow pin to at least take a little bit off him for the moment. Uh, we don't want her specifically just doing only this for now, but I want her to train up her dagger skills slightly. Uh, we probably should have used this uh, going after her instead, but we're just going to go ahead and go for the stab. Uh, we want to get our other cleric up at some point, uh, but he'll go over here and pick up this uh, bit card just kind of because it's a good position for him, blocks off the area a little bit. Uh, she's going to attempt to use that major heal to keep up with all of the chaos that we've been sowing out there, and we're going to go ahead and resurrect and get our... Uh, uh, kind of continue our uh, uh, charm chain going on over here. So, next stop, she's going to go ahead and meditate. And as you can see, because she's got pretty uh, high MP at this point, uh, whenever you're resurrected, um, if you've got pretty high MP, it gives you more MP to start off with. So pretty much no matter what she does, she's going to have options. So, um, we could potentially reset some turns here, maybe uh, get some fun stuff going there. His turn's already coming up. I'm thinking probably uh, a combination of uh, Tammuz and uh, two Burb, three Furious over here is going to be able to uh, deal with uh, Doppelkashwa just fine. So next order of business is to maybe turn off some of their offense. A pretty decent chance of uh, capturing their uh, archer over here. So we're going to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, her MP is just fine. We're not going to bother with that MP card. It's a bit risky as it is. Uh, Doppled enemy uh, ends up taking a pretty meaty hit there, and uh, we've got uh, let's see a 70 over here, a five over here. Uh, it might be worth using one of these shots at this point just to guarantee that this happens. So we'll just go ahead and set this up right here. We haven't picked up any fizz cards on him just yet, so we do want him to be uh, taking some uh, some precautions later on. Um, but for the time being, it looks like uh, that doesn't quite want to happen. This does, though, so we can go ahead and take our uh, Rending Gale over here and throw it on him, or we can just throw a Poison. 332 plus Poison should see him completely taken care of. And we're going to go ahead and pick up the, uh, uh, the extra card here on Tammuz. There's a non-zero chance that by the end of the fight he will have his final one uh, unlocked, so there's that. Uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, attack our uh, Enchantress, but she, uh, she lives through it, and we continue on. All right, uh, Doppelkashwa doing her thing there, does end up taking a second attack on the Enchantress, and we're still fine, we're still here. Uh, he's probably going to, yeah, Tammuz is basically his only valid target at this point, and that guy has actually put himself on a nice convenient cliff for us to throw him off. All right, so next order of business, due to 
shenanigans. We're just going to go attempt to get rid of their archer at this point. So he should be able to walk over here, should be able to uh, do a little bit of a stun breath in this direction, finish off their archer, potentially stun the other guy. There we are. Uh, just know the uh, the weaknesses of your party, potentially create some, own, some of your own. As you can see, power is... Power is a relative thing. While you can make your numbers go up in certain situations, the more you get into endgame, the more these situations come up where there's just more to consider than just power. There's just more going on. All right. So Doppelkashwa is over there looking a bit spookified. We've got a, a pretty decent uh, nuke here available. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, drop it right here. Now, realistically, when it comes to these... Uh, these finishers and things, they're are not finishers uh, when it comes to spells and things. This isn't the end-all be-all. Like, uh, when you see stuff like Apocryphas or Summons or whatever else, they're usually modifications of existing stuff. Uh, like, for example, uh, something like Summons are going to functionally be a middle ground between, uh, between a Missile and a Splash. So, like, the Splash by itself would end up doing more in its ideal situation. The Missile by itself would easily outrange anything that, uh, that it's running into. But its entire purpose is to essentially burst four quick missiles into one area. Well, up to four. There's a lot of kind of asterisks to that particular thing. Anyway, uh, so the main point of all of that stuff is it essentially just to be a short-range burst. So it just kind of depends on what it's uh, useful for there. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, Tammuz here isn't really coming up anytime soon, but he is an ice element. Uh, we can potentially uh, charm him with this, so we'll just go ahead and attempt to do so. And again, this is on a, uh, you know, equivalent knight uh, and what have you. Yes, he's hit by fear. If he was hit by breach, that might have potentially gone up to, you know, six, eight hundred somewhere. It, it definitely would have been up there, whatever it is. We do want to get our uh, cleric up at some point. They get that uh, condemn going again. He stumbles again. And again, you can see the uh, the strength of these debuffs uh, coming up yet again. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the kind of uh, power and control, so to speak. So their clerics are just wondering what they're even here for over in that direction. Uh, they attempt to get that uh, ease going, but it's realistically as good as they can do for now. Uh, we'll get uh, our resurrection going on our cleric. The reason we want... To, uh, uh, we want to have a decent amount of MP on these guys, as previously mentioned. When they come back with the Resurrection, uh, they're going to come back with 25% of whatever they had. If they have uh, 25, uh, you know, like let's say that 25% happens to be close to 400, well, that essentially means that they have the opportunity to come back with a free Resurrection, meaning that if you have multiple Clerics, you can use one Resurrection to then chain into another Resurrection, and you get the general idea there. All right, so next order of business, he's going to go over here. This guy's not hit by fear, although he is going to still hit pretty hard here. Has a pretty decent chance to drop anything beyond that, too. All right, got a guardian force going. Uh, we got his uh, phalanx going. I'm thinking we probably just poison and run here, because uh, we uh, kind of want to block in that guy over there if we can. But for now, we just block this area. Uh, we prevent these two from progressing any further. We got the poison off. And their clerics are, simply put, overwhelmed at this point. There's not really too much that they can reasonably do. Uh, that knight over here, I'm expecting him to attack and take a counter and be killed, so I'm not worried about what he's going to do. And additionally, I thought we just did a resurrection. Why are you not up yet? Did everybody's turn just happen to roll at the exact same time? Oh, Condemn is still active. I forgot to uh, fix that. Whoops. Yeah, you know what? It happens. Whatever. Anyway, so, uh, let's see. Next order of business, then. Let's go ahead and uh, top off uh, her a little bit for the time being. And then we move on from there. Uh, next, let's go ahead and fire on one of these two. I'm thinking just this, so that we can make sure that uh, one more poison tick sees him gone. And part of the reason that we want to uh, let poison finish these guys off is just... If they are applying any healing, we don't have to we don't have to worry about it going to a more useful place. You know, we can just uh, make sure that it goes where it needs to go. All right, so their uh, knight, their terror knight rather, is over here. Let's see if we can maybe get him on our side. There we go. We rolled that charm yet again. Uh, this is fairly reliable. I'll go ahead and actually remember to turn on Absolution this time, and then get our uh, res chain going. Uh, so we'll go ahead and allow that to happen. We'll go ahead and resurrect uh, uh, Jennifer over here, uh, get her back up on her feet. 
Uh, she comes back with 74. Doesn't roll her meditate, though, which is unfortunate, but it's fine. So she didn't roll her extra, but she do, does have a heal three. Now, I know that uh, realistically, if I try to do a, uh, a major over here, Glenda here will still get knocked out regardless. So there's no point in attempting to heal her, and I'm just going to take the bigger heal on uh, Casual in that particular situation. Now, also, I know that uh, this guy has a chance to get knocked back, so I'm just going to go ahead and go for the whack here rather than anything particularly special, just in an attempt to throw him off the cliff. I'm not too concerned. I'm just here trying to uh, throw him off the cliff. Now, we do have an opportunity to go and help this cleric out, though. Uh, if she does end up uh, taking that hit, uh, she can survive it as long as it's not a crit. Uh, by just going and healing her up right here. And the, we're essentially going to be using our items in this early phase uh, to allow us to uh, make it to the second phase um, and then kind of carry on from there. Again, rolling for that uh, knockback chance. You can uh, move uh, Griffiths over in this direction. Uh, we've pretty much uh, got almost absolute control over this, uh, this fight at this point. Uh, main thing I'm worried about is that our uh, clerics are a little bit too bunched up and we haven't uh, dropped a silence in a little bit of a while. So we're going to currently work on that a little bit. Uh, we do have an archer turn coming up. Um, I want to see if I can just shoot this uh, ninja off the ledge right now. That uh, would be uh, very handy if this ended up rolling the knockback. It uh, didn't quite end up happening in that case. If you do have a shield, uh, this is again that same uh, place. You can just simply throw a unit off any other time. And uh, we might as well just roll for the chance of a knockback using something like this here. There we go. That did the trick. So obviously you can do this through anything. All moves have a chance of knockback to some degree, um, except for, I think, shots. I don't believe uh, shots have any knockback chance, funnily enough. But uh, she's going to go ahead and Mother's Mercy her way out of her current predicament. Uh, she's going to go ahead and uh, resurrect this one. Um, and it looks like Silence is uh, completely fallen off of uh, Dorgie at this point. So we're actually going to move her up in this direction right here. Uh, just so if they do get knocked out, uh, it would be in uh, different directions. Um, I don't see any uh, Condemn effect uh, currently active. And funnily enough, that's actually the only time that that particular pop-up ever comes up. Um, it's uh, kind of a rarer one. Uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, see about mind controlling their cleric over here. Uh, we should just have enough range, and it looks like 56%. I will take that, because it's just a little bit of extra health for us. And there we go. Uh, their cleric is now our friend. Uh, debuffs plus concentration are insanely broken if you, uh, you know, if you give them the, uh, give them the, uh, the chance. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, throw a little bit of a heal back here. Uh, it won't be enough to keep her off of Death's Door for the time being, but it will be a good step in the right direction. Uh, we got our Meditate, we got our Mercy. Did we get our Blessing too? Didn't get the Blessing this time. Again, it comes up. It happens. So, uh, we know that uh, Denim's probably reasonably safe at this point. Uh, I didn't see if uh, it didn't look like Condemn ended up rolling. That's fine. Uh, that's actually pretty helpful, all things considered. And we'll go ahead and throw a little bit of uh, healing in this direction. Mostly we want to get our uh, Cleric patched up. Uh, Cash was probably pretty safe. Uh, Archer's a pretty tempting target for her right now. Uh, a lot of their team is currently our team, so that's beneficial for us. Uh, we'll probably want to deal with the, uh, the Hoplite by throwing him off the ledge. And then we probably want to deal with these guys sooner rather than later. Uh, but we want to probably start picking up some cards at this point. So let's see, we got a uh, crit card, we got a fizz card over there. Um, actually, no, these are both matchup cards. We don't really need matchup on anyone other than Kashua right now. So we'll just go ahead and uh, pick up this uh, crit card over in this direction. And uh, eh, we're just a little bit short of uh, going and uh, attempting to roll that crit snipe. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can maybe just throw her off a cliff right here. Uh, probably a little bit premature, but whatever. It's fun to uh, see that happen. And uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, Brimstone Hail will cause these grass tiles over here to break, uh, we will go ahead and spawn additional cards. So, like I mentioned earlier, any prop that you throw a rock at will spawn another tile. So whether you throw uh, rocks at this grass, whether you use fire, or sorry, at uh, the uh, the bush over here, uh, the Utica grass, uh, or if you use fire or lightning to burn away these other tiles, you will cause additional things to end up spawning. So those can be uh, handy in their own particular situations. Now let's go ahead and see if we can maybe finish off Tammuz over here just uh, to save ourselves a little bit of uh, uh, time down the line and to train up her dagger skill a little bit. As, uh, I, realistically, I don't expect her to have it fully trained by the end of the fight. I probably should have trained her up beforehand, but oh well. Now, the cool thing about all of this kind of stuff is that, as you can see right here, uh, when his numbers end up lining up, this now means that uh, Griffiths uh, can potentially crit roll up to 600 health recovery on an attack. 
which is just downright disgusting. But uh, for the time being, we'll go ahead and uh, keep him uh, where he is. And uh, we'll go ahead and move around and pick up a few things. Uh, let's see, there's an MP card over here. You know what? Just on the off chance that maybe he needs it, we'll go ahead and pick that up right now. Uh, this isn't going to be a, a long-term save file that I keep around. Uh, but oh well. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got a uh, crit available over here. That guy is not currently silenced, so there's a chance he'll throw out some meteors, which could cause a problem. But I do want him to potentially crit and uh, get that physical up card over there. So we'll go ahead and pick that up on him. Uh, just uh, go ahead and have him face this direction. Dorgie is going to roll that condemn again. That's not really a chance roll. He just kind of does it when he feels like it. And they're going to go ahead and aim right in the center. Uh, surprisingly, he didn't go for either of the divine units, which actually ends up working out pretty decently for us here. Their uh, two other units are about to act, and I would prefer for this guy to maybe act in a completely different direction, so we'll just go ahead and remove one of his layers here. It's probably a little bit of a wasted action. But there we go, he goes and uh, hits him with that. Had a chance to stun, unfortunately uh, gets the uh, the stop there, uh, goes and uh, does his apostate, goes for the uh, the dull bind, no crit thankfully. Uh, I don't believe he actually had any cards picked up, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a chance to crit naturally. Natural crits are rare, but they're scary when they happen. Anyway, since he rolled his apostate, uh, we won't necessarily get very much out of an ice requiem here, but uh, it would be enough to do some pretty decent numbers versus Gerald over in this direction, so we'll just go ahead and start working on him. We don't really need him for anything anymore, so we'll just go ahead and uh, get uh, some of his numbers down, and then we can probably just immediately recharm him, all things considered. In fact, we might as well... Uh, all right, so looking at it here, it looks like uh, these two would probably be a pretty solid choice, uh, just because there's a chance for uh, Meditate to roll. Uh, on the uh, Cleric, uh, didn't seem like uh, she felt it just uh, this once here. So instead, uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, throw a little bit of uh, a little bit of healing out there. Uh, turns out it's the other one that had ease, so uh, well. We'll go ahead and uh, throw a uh, Major over in here. Probably have her move, her move uh, over in this direction real quick. Throw that out there, do a little bit of healing, and then uh, move on to the next round. Uh, so far, everything is completely under control. So Griffiths is going to go over here, have himself a nice little snack. What kind of card is this? MP Recharge. Doesn't really need it. Um, while it will be helpful later on, a uh, good thing about Griffins is that uh, when you're going into the final fight, uh, you can potentially just have them stay well out of the, uh, the fight and just kind of come back in when they're recharged. You don't necessarily need to be all up in their business all the time. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and see. Uh, we, our Shadowbind isn't quite ready as of yet, uh, but we can go ahead and reapply this uh, silence in this case. So we'll go ahead and throw that on him, as you do. I'm just kind of continue waiting on here. Now, that silence will stop being useful next uh, next round, but for now, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be pretty handy for us. Uh, let's see, looks like uh, we got our uh, Terra Knight that's going to be acting pretty soon here. Again, heal 2 in this case is not really going to be enough to uh, get this uh, Enchantress uh, away from being uh, uh, taken out, but for the moment it will be okay. Now, out of curiosity, he's got two cards. Might be able to angle that out from there, but it's not going to be quite enough. And we want to set him up for uh, for those big, uh, you know, big physical uh, uh, crits with that uh, cudgel there. So either way, we're going to leave him for the time being. He's going to go for the attack versus the ninja, which is perfectly fine to me. Uh, so let's go ahead and move in this direction right here. Get the Terra Knight taken out. Goodbye to you. Nice big meaty hits off that crossbow. Uh, just strength units in general, regardless of however the uh, uh, the actual scaling is supposed to work on those things. I got to say, it always feels like... Uh, uh, like uh, just strength units in general just benefit so much more uh, when it comes to crossbows. You just see some insane numbers flying out of him at times. Anyway, he's going to park himself right by the cliff there, which works out pretty nicely because we're going to go ahead and start bullying him off said cliff. See if we can maybe get the knockback here, and perfect. There is a about 1,000 damage hit off a of griffin. That'll do very nicely. All right, so we'll go ahead and take our uh, multi-heal over here, and we'll probably want to um, probably go ahead and uh, get one of our other resurrection options to uh, go get that cleric back up on her feet. I just noticed, I think I put my second resurrection on a unit I didn't even deploy to this fight. Oops. Oh well. Anyway, we'll go ahead and negate that condemn anyway. And continue on. Uh, so, who's got some blessing stones on him? Uh, you don't. But, in the meantime, since we don't want to deal with this guy's nonsense, we're going to start throwing some slows at him. Cool thing about Conserve RT, as well as the uh, relatively uh, cheap spells uh, that she'll be using, 
is that she can take a, well, even her natural regeneration is usually enough to get some of those debuffs going, and on top of that, uh, she'll just be able to uh, keep using those quick casts to keep him suppressed with something like slow. That's going to be her role going forward. So while Kasha will, will be uh, taking over, it's uh, kind of collecting some cards just to give her some kind of use as that uh, secondary caster. Uh, we're going to have a uh, backup healer out of uh, Denim with his conserve uh, MP. Uh, he's going to be sticking with uh, Rune Fencer in this case. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, speed up our Griffin here to make his turn come up a little bit faster. Uh, the Griffin is just going to be there on offensive support. Uh, we're going to have uh, debuffs coming out of the Ninja. We're going to have debuffs coming out of the Archer as well as using the Archer uh, to apply other debuffs as well. We've got False Strike coming off of the Knight, as well as also the Ninja here. Again, we're just applying lots of redundancy in this situation in all kinds of different directions, but looks like we can get a, uh, a Blessing Stone off this guy. I'm going to save it for the time being, because there's more than one Blessing Stone available uh, over, on the, um, uh, over on the Griffin. And for the time being, I would prefer to have more options, or uh, more stones in more places, rather than sticking with one particular option. So, that's going to be our plan going forward here. We're going to look for one more Fizz card for Mr. Gerald. Uh, we have a few more Breach options on a few of our units, uh, uh, like for the case, in the case of the Spear. We can roll a chance for the, uh, the Breach itself, or if we decided to bring Finishers, the secondary uh, Finisher would also have a chance to Breach. Um, in this case, you know, I would like the knight to actually pick up this crit card over here. It could be useful for him. So we'll just go ahead and deck ourselves out, so to speak. Uh, no pun intended, or maybe it's completely intended. Who knows? Anyway, so even with a completely suboptimal setup here, uh, she's going to come back like that. Ideally, again, resurrection would be the way to go, but didn't quite happen in this case. So because that guy's silenced, he's going to be locked into his normal movement range, meaning that she should be relatively safe way out here. Uh, we're going to have uh, the Griffin going in for an attack over here. we just go ahead and maybe do a little bit of uh, Stun Breath on him, see if we get uh, that Stun Rolled. Uh, didn't quite happen in that case, but that is fine. And we'll go ahead and apply, let's see, let's see, we have some Fizz cards and things like that. I'll probably just move over in this direction. Go ahead and take a little bit of a shot here, see if we can get that uh, Stun Rolling. Uh, stun would be ideal uh, if we can get it. Uh, let's see, we got Condemn. Yes, yes. And then he's got his attack. But due to that fall strike, that attack won't land all the time. And due to stun, we can pretty much lock him down at this point. So with uh, with slow, you can see he's not even popping up on the turn order right now. Uh, we can apply leaden uh, from our bow finishers to slow him down even more. And we'll just keep reapplying this, uh, this slow as much as we can. We'll just keep uh, uh, spamming it. Every now and then, it'll end up missing. That's fine. Again, 30% is 30%, but it's more than enough to keep things good and stable. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, use our uh, heal 2 in this case. Keep yourself all nice and topped off. Um, I would like to pick up some uh, some cards on her, but for the time being, eh, I guess we'll pick up at least a uh, MP regen. Um, and there we go. We'll put that there. So you've got a physical. I don't quite want that on you. We'll go ahead and move over in this way. So at this point with... Uh, Everything looking pretty decent. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and move Denim over in this direction. Uh, go ahead and get his uh, skills up a little bit. Go ahead and get the uh, speed up on our uh, clerics a little bit. Uh, attempt to uh, slow this guy down even further. Just take as many actions as we can in as little time as we can. Let's go ahead and uh, pick up this uh, card right here. Basically, the more cards that you pick up, the more that it will want to spawn. So, let's say right here, we, we don't see a physical up uh, anywhere on the field. Or, actually, wait, he does have one right there, doesn't he? Well, okay, we'll go ahead and apply that to somebody else in just a moment then. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, reapply Paralysis to this guy, or at least attempt to. We'll take that 30%. Uh, decent chance to mess, decent chance to land. It goes however it goes. Anyway, he's got his bridle, he's got his concentration. Uh, he won't be rolling his stun this time, but he can re-up his uh, silence. So one thing that's also uh, worth mentioning at this point is uh, when it comes to that ninja, the reason that I have him using that short bow, uh, if you are new to the channel here, uh, short bows are still going to have a chance to uh, to roll, uh, but they're also going to be the lightest uh, weight weapon that, uh, uh, that they're going to be able to equip, which is going to be pretty handy. Um, at this point, uh, looks like our uh, unit over there is getting pretty close to uh, bleeding out. Um, looks like we should still be good, uh, all things considered, so in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and continue pressuring this guy over here. 
Um, until then, let's continue picking up some cards. So, I did, did mention earlier that uh, throwing rocks is going to be pretty handy. The crossbow will be just out of range here. So I'm just going to go ahead and have our uh, hoplite uh, handle the rock throwing duties, as it were. Uh, but there's a lot of these little uh, little bits and pieces all over the place uh, in terms of uh, in terms of props and things. So those can be broken whenever you'd like uh, to again spawn you know spawn some kind of card. This doesn't guarantee that it's always going to be the one that you necessarily want, uh, but it is going to be helpful. So let's go ahead and park you right there. Uh, we're going to attempt to paradigm shift right here uh, for two reasons. Uh, for one, I want to get our enchantress back up on her feet as soon as we can. And additionally, I'd like to uh, go and uh, attempt to re-stun uh, this guy uh, whenever we can. So she's going to go over in this direction. And really what we'd like to do is try to block him off to some degree. Uh, despite the fact that uh, he does teleport... Uh, oh, actually, right, I forgot to... Uh, that would help. I forgot to uh, turn off uh, uh, turn off condemn as you do. Either way, it happens. It's fine. So we'll just go ahead and uh, get our uh, lucky star going. We'll go ahead and uh, apparently we don't have any debuffs to remove, and we'll go ahead and top off this uh, cleric over here a little bit more. She's still a little bit under where she needs to be, um, but we'll go ahead and uh, re up our uh, archer over here. I just go ahead and use one of these blessing stones. It would have been nice to save them, but I did kind of screw that up. So we'll go ahead and leave you right there. Uh, he's going to go for a melee attack. He'll probably go for the griffin. Ideally, he goes for the griffin. Uh, but uh, Eagle Eye ends up rolling. She's going to go back here. Go ahead and take her... Uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and take a full heal on her, just to be safe. Uh, and... Uh, and I want her going into the final fight with a few extra goodies. We're probably more than prepared at the moment uh, to take on the final fight, but I would like to... Uh, I would like to set up a few things just to make a little bit of a point here. So he's going to go here, pick up a card, just because he can, and because why not. Uh, gets the uh, the false strike going, where he uh, loses the false strike, uh, we get our, uh, our cleric uh, knocked out there. But this is fine, we can just go ahead and, uh, ooh, actually, he's actually fine as it is. For the sake of comparison, uh, just so we have some numbers to go by, uh, if he goes for the raining blows at this point, uh, he would be able to do 1,040, and this is before the breach, uh, not to mention uh, before the crit. So potentially, uh, if he's uh, dropping this, uh, we could potentially see somewhere in the ballpark of, you know, well beyond a one-shot, uh, just off of a uh, just off of a cudgel here. But we'll go ahead and uh, just kind of leave that as is for now. He's just going to take his normal physical hits. He'll only attack one target. We just want to keep reapplying our stuff, uh, get everybody topped off for round two, as it were, and uh, get our uh, one knocked out unit brought back up on her feet. Go ahead and uh, kind of move you in a this-worldly direction. Uh, probably should have uh, had somebody else go break this grass, but there we go. So that's going to spawn a matchup card. Not really anything too terribly useful for us right now. So we'll just go ahead and attempt to use the uh, dark weight on this guy uh, to slow this uh, unfortunate uh, purple guy down a little bit more. So Leaden does affect speed to some degree. Uh, truth be told, uh, up to this point, it's still a little bit unclear as to the exact stuff going on there. Uh, but either way, uh, we want to try to pick up more cards if we can. So we'll go ahead and uh, have him break some tiles over in this direction. So it looks like we've got grass, 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 grass. And we'll just go ahead and plant ourselves some cards, as you do. Uh, see if we end up uh, spawning any more. Didn't get any out of that particular one, but this is fine. Uh, again, it is a chance for those things to roll. This doesn't mean that it's always guaranteed. So go ahead and uh, get our uh, stun breath going over here. This might be getting him a little bit too low at this point. Uh, it's fine. It's fine as it is. So we'll go ahead and uh, throw out our uh, slow here. The cool thing about concentration is, again, it basically allows you to hit stuff you wouldn't otherwise be able to hit. Uh, this guy's debuff resistance is pretty much top notch, but that doesn't mean that he's immune. So uh, essentially all we're abusing here is uh, his ability to constantly end up uh, uh, get hit, getting hit by 30%, uh, which is pretty handy. Anyway, we'll uh, turn on our absolution, we'll get ourselves in position to go uh, get that lady back up on her feet, go pick up an MP regeneration card, uh, because uh, MP regeneration combined with uh, uh, skill cards will allow her to be able to uh, get a uh, one turn uh, resurrection, uh, whereas otherwise it might be a bit more difficult. And so that kind of stuff is uh, helpful to think about in terms of uh, if you can't accomplish something right now, how can you potentially make it happen? So anyways, I will keep on uh, attempting to drop some leaden on this guy just to slow him down because we don't want him uh, we don't want him doing stuff as much as possible. Uh, we are currently down a, uh, a speed boost here would be uh, or not a speed boost. Uh, we're currently down a uh, silence on him. 
So we do want that addressed as well. Uh, Tammuz is perfectly well set up at this point. Uh, he's perfectly well set up at this point. Uh, we are... Well, he is still stunned, so we're fine in that regard. We can't really afford to take another attack on him. Uh, let's see. Her eagle eye, I believe, has rolled at this point. So she has an eagle eye, so she has a guaranteed silence on him. So we'll go ahead and throw that out there, since it's pretty easy to outheal one of his melee attacks. It's definitely far less easy to uh, outheal one of his other attacks. So I'll throw that out right there. Uh, let's see. We are not going to be able to stop, but we are going to be able to use a dark weight. Due to the fact that he's got pretty darn high armor, if you do inflict a breach on him, you'll start seeing some of those other effects showing up. But uh, in his particular case, we uh, don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, we're going to drop him over in this direction. He's going to go throw yet another Condemn out there, as he does. He's burning his MP on that, because he doesn't really have anything else to spend it on. He's going to take the uh, counter crit from the Griffin. Thankfully, that didn't end up throwing us over. Uh, that was very close to uh, throwing us over into uh, kind of unfortunate territory. We do want to start uh, focusing on healing up that Cleric as much as possible, so that she can survive a hit. Uh, part of the reason that we're picking up so many skill cards on these Clerics, and obviously it would be ideal to pick up more, um, but part of the reason that we're doing that is for Mother's Mercy, which means that uh, if they are not hit by fear, uh, they're not hit by that uh, stun, they're going to be a lot more useful later on. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, looks like her uh, spell strike wore off, so we're just going to have her wait for the moment. Uh, this guy's going to go ahead and fire on this bush, uh, see if he ends up getting one of those cards that he wants. It really wants us to be attacking with magic stuff today, apparently. But I think we're just going to go ahead and uh, start, uh, as soon as we get our uh, unit up here, we're just going to start uh, working towards getting into our final phase here. Let's have you face in this direction. Uh, I think we... Now, we just go ahead and wait for the uh, the Cleric to do her resurrection. Uh, we already have you all fully well set up. It's not really going to be spawning too many other cards at this point. Um, he's already got his uh, crits and everything else set up. Really, all we're going to need is going to be a Breach there. Uh, so, let's go ahead and throw more heals, as you do. Throw a few more heals. I should have used a 3 instead, actually. Oh, well, either way, uh, we'll go ahead and throw a Resurrection out there. Uh, obviously, staff in the main hand in order to increase the range of that, and we'll go ahead and move you over in this direction, just to make sure that you're not getting hit by those debuffs. So we'll go ahead and throw that out there. Now, with three skill cards, two skill cards is basically like 90%. Three skill cards just gets it to that last little bit. Um, so we'll, from here, we'll go ahead and throw in one more uh, major heal in that direction. And I think we'll be good to go just to uh, proceed on to the final phase here. Uh, while she is a little bit low at the moment, and that's not ideal, I think we'll we'll just go ahead and take this moment now. Since we, uh, since we don't necessarily need the archer as much for the second phase, she's primarily going to be using her uh, dagger finishers to go snipe the guy at a distance, and we'll go ahead and move on here. Uh, we've got a good number of turns coming up, a good number of turns to set up. She rolls her concentration, and we're going to start off by putting slow on this guy. He shakes off his debuffs from the previous round, but things like slow will still hit him, things like leaden will still hit him, stun will still hit him. Uh, silence does hit him, but it's a little bit pointless in this case. Uh, this is why I have been numb at the uh, top of this guy's skill list. It's one of those little things where the one that you'd prefer to have the most, uh, you have at the very end, just to make sure that uh, if, you know, if everything else fails, that's the one that'll definitely make sure, uh, that'll, uh, that'll definitely finish off the list. So we've got stun to ruin his uh, turn economy. Uh, next up, we'll uh, go ahead and apply a uh, siphon here. Uh, just to go ahead and steal a little bit of health off him. Again, you know, he's only dealing 100 in this case. But considering what they're usually known for, that's pretty darn decent. I haven't picked up any Fizz cards on this guy, but he's still going to be dropping 425s. Still 10% health off one item uh, that you could spread amongst the entire party. Could see a one-round kill on this guy using just shots. If you picked up any Fizz cards, fantastic. Didn't really happen in that case. But we're going to attempt to apply some uh, some debuffs and other things as we go along here. Now, 294 would feel pretty nice, but he is out of range of that, so we're probably going to have to settle for something a little bit more minor. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and uh, throw a uh, avalanche out there. Uh, should be able to just barely hit him from behind here. There we go. Throw a little bit of ice. Throw you in this direction. Uh, throw out a little bit of uh, BOS. Um, so while we do have a fizz up card on him, we don't have any skills on him. So we're really just going... And we didn't bring a warrior along, so we can't guarantee his debuff. 
Um, but we can have pretty decent odds of landing it at any rate. Uh, we just kind of speed him up and keep on hitting with that debuff. Being able to reapply stuff is really what matters at this point. Uh, you want to keep throwing that stuff out there as much as you physically can. And something like stop just so you know won't uh, come off of the uh, Sanctus Flare. It just won't hit him. Uh, but we are still going to be able to do decent numbers uh, with just a basic crossbow as well as having a chance to stun. Uh, we're going to have you go ahead and start getting into position, just kind of have him take some uh, relatively fast turns. Uh, if we wanted to do this, it would do next to nothing. But if we look over at some of our other finishers here, that's pretty decent as is. And then this is before we applied the breach. So we're just going to go ahead and have him uh, throw on a uh, plume here. Uh, we want that guy to ideally uh, just uh, stagger as much as he can, hopefully. Uh, as they end up uh, taking out the Resurrection Cleric. Not ideal, but we have ways around that. Uh, now, just so you know, now that we're in his second phase, uh, he no longer has Condemn, so that's nothing we need to worry about. He has Howl, which will have a chance to stun. He has Death Proof uh, for the same stuff as before. Exaltio is the one that is in an area around him uh, for uh, six, uh, uh, six tiles facing outwards. It's a huge area. It'll hit a lot of units, but uh, it also can be blocked off with something like Evade. Um, and additionally, uh, you have Umbra, which will do so at, uh, uh, at a distance, uh, applying Fear and getting rid of MP. It's basically a Dark Orb that he can and reuse infinitely. Um, in this particular case, it's uh, not really uh, not really going to matter too much, but we're going to go ahead and pick up this card uh, just uh, on the off chance that it affects his skills. I don't believe they do. I believe all of his stuff counts as physical, um, since uh, you know all that stuff seems to uh, to hit him pretty decently. Uh, we've got Guardian Force up at this point, so we're going to probably put him next to the Clerics, uh, attempt to do a little bit more healing. Um, we're just going to go ahead and use uh, Cashway here. Uh, really what I want to do is uh, pressure Whirl into, uh, into magic stuff, but we'll play that by ear. Uh, for the time being, again, since we didn't really get the uh, cards that we wanted, we're just going to go ahead and uh, continue applying these as they are. Just going to throw them out there for that free 400 here. Um, if you have physical up cards, again, you can get that up dramatically higher, but for the time being, that's going to do the job just fine. Now we're going to go ahead and throw a, a heal on her, uh, just, uh, just to hopefully get her within the window here. Now, ideally, I want her throwing out a uh, slow and then running away, because uh, she wants to not be part of the fight. She wants to be spamming debuffs at a long distance. So we're going to have her going way back here. Uh, additionally, uh, we're going to have you uh, attempting to drop some of those dagger finishers. Um, and then also, she was supposed to drop a heal, uh, heal powder earlier, but didn't quite end up happening. But again, these things happen. Uh, we want to drop a uh, Dark Weight as soon as we can. We want to drop a Breach as soon as we can. But due to the fact that this guy uh, moves around like a crazy person, obviously that's going to get a little bit complicated at times. But we're just going to go ahead and get our uh, Revive Cleric up right here, uh, see if uh, her cards are enough to see her getting a turn one Resurrection. Um, if that ends up high rolling, there's a chance for that, but didn't quite end up happening in this case. So instead, uh, we're just going to go ahead and throw out a bit of an ease right here uh, onto uh, Griffiths, just to kind of get that out there. Uh, he's probably going to go ahead and uh, go for, uh, oh, well, I guess he decided, no, he didn't decide for anything. He decided to go for the melee, that's fine. And this is one of those reasons that uh, it helps to bring along something like a Juggernaut. If you can drain him of MP, uh, it's going to cause a pretty significant drop in, uh, in his ability to do stuff. Since, again, silence doesn't really work at this point, uh, but other stuff does. Uh, we're going to go ahead and speed up probably Evan here. Because uh, once that breach ends up hitting, uh, he's going to be uh, throwing out some pretty meaty numbers. Um, I do want the Terra Knight moving relatively quick, but again, we're just kind of dealing with things as we do. Let's see, and just as it is right now, he's going to do just regular 208 uh, with that uh, brimstone. So we're just going to wait uh, for the time being. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, uh, plume, well, I would plume him, but currently he's got evade up. Um, and evade is just one of those things that's going to make hoplites excellent here. Uh, since uh, with, uh, uh, with evade on hand, you're able to apply... Um, or you're able to just basically completely shrug off his hits. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty fantastic. But uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, apply some jewels to the avatar because, in theory, while I while it doesn't show you the hit odds, um, in theory, uh, dodge should be able to you know dodge his abilities here. Goes for the howl, goes for the umbra, on two units that really are not going to be doing much in terms of damage and are primarily there for debuffs, so that works out nicely. We're again just kind of mitigating throwing stuff out there. Umbra's going to hit extra hard because she is that divine element. Um, this is why again we bring backup plans. So go over here. We're going to go ahead and throw out this uh, Thundershot to, again, throw out another 400 on him. We got him about halfway down at this point, and even though a lot of things have not quite gone to plan, it's going decently enough. Uh, we definitely do not want to be picking up that. 
Let's go ahead and back out of that real quick. Uh, thankfully, it does let you back up out of attacking those, or out of uh, picking them up, rather. Just take a regular uh, 48 there, as you do, and as soon as we get a uh, slow, as soon as we get some leadens, like, there's a lot more that you can be doing to potentially slow this guy down. So I'm just going to go ahead and slow him down here. There we go. Uh, Paradigm Shift might have also been a way to go there. Uh, but for the time being, we'll just do as is here, and let's see, we get a resurrection. Probably just go ahead and resurrect our other cleric so that she's a nice, big, juicy, tempting target, and move you in this direction. Uh, so that hope I'll well, actually not there, but hopefully somewhere a bit more awkward, like right here. Um, also, if you want to stick around uh, nearby uh, some uh, some buff cards, uh, or some uh, rather uh, buff removal cards, you'll occasionally see some pretty excellent returns out of that as well. Uh, where sometimes uh, he'll end up just parking himself right on top of him, uh, getting rid of uh, his whole stack as, just kind of right there as it is. All right, so again, we'll we'll be applying false strike to him to uh, see about uh, getting uh, his evasion down or his accuracy down a decent bit. Um, it doesn't, while it does technically lower accuracy, it also means that he has a maximum hit chance of 80%, so that's pretty darn handy. Uh, next up, we'll also be applying a uh, Blessing Stone over in this direction. This kind of gives us uh, less units to get back up on their feet. Also gives him something to do while he's over in this direction. Uh, he's got a Silence. Does he have that Stun? If he has a Stun, that would be pretty helpful. Um, Alright, so he also has a Blessing Stone on him. For the time being, we're just going to go ahead and take the heal off this. There's a small chance uh, that he survives uh, just by using that. We're going to put him way out here. Uh, best case scenario, he doesn't get attacked. Worst case scenario, we're looking at a case where maybe he ends up lasting a decent bit longer because of it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and apply a... Uh, actually, it looks like our dull binds on a regular... Sh okay, no, they don't. I was going to say, it looks like they do the same damage, but they don't. I'm just going to go ahead and fire out a dull bind right here. I just noticed there's a fizz card right there. That definitely would have been helpful just a moment ago. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, he'll be able to attack just fine in the next round. And we've got our uh, 294 coming off of our Apocrypha here. Though I still personally feel like we're, we should just continue using uh, using Avalanche just to make a point. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Because we can also get her out of the way here, which would be a decent bit more helpful anyway. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Well, it is a couple hundred extra damage. It's perfectly fine as is. Apocrypha is a little bit uh, harder to utilize, and a lot of folks probably won't even have it at this point. Either way, uh, let's see if we can get just within range to uh, to throw out this uh, spear poke here. Hopefully I uh, get that breach off. And he stumbles. He's just not having a good time of it. Um, one, th one way you can also apply this is through something like dragons. If you bring out a lot of dragons, they've got guaranteed debuff on their breath moves. Uh, you can uh, work it in so that it's going to be a fairly uh, cheap action to take. In general, it's just going to be a good time. But... Anyway, let's see, is his evade still up? It is not. So, what we can do is actually go over here, we can go ahead and apply this plume at this point, go ahead and get his uh, damage boosted up a little bit more, so that he's looking at some pretty meaty numbers here. Uh, let's see, we don't have our our breach as of yet, but we can just go ahead and uh, let this uh, let this ride as it is. So probably take our uh, rifle or our pressure whirl, probably go for the pressure whirl, just go ahead and set up for Kashua, because why not? Uh, rolled the uh, crit there, so that's pretty handy. Uh, we also have potentially a second backup coming out of you, although her uh, uh, her hitting is not going to be nearly as impressive. Uh, we can potentially just paradigm shift you, and just go ahead and make that happen again. Just go ahead and drop a second finisher on him, because why not? Uh, pick up a uh, fizz card on her, maybe she'll be able to do something a bit more crazy. Anyway, uh, re-up that uh, pressure whirl, because, again, just why not? Uh, rolled a second crit. Kind of uh, kind of crazy how all that ends up going. And while I would prefer a breach, it is what it is. It's what we've got available right now. And we'll just go ahead and apply that uh, dull bind there as well. It's funny how cudgels and crossbows are currently, uh, currently rocking it in terms of uh, being the most effective stuff that we're doing. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and throw a uh, heal on uh, Denim here, just in case he wants to uh, get that breach off with his spear at some point. Uh, probably should have picked up the skill card with her. Uh, goes for the Howl. Seems to be going for a melee, interestingly enough. Okay, alright, whatever. So, with that all done, uh, looks like we can go get a little bit of resurrection going. I'm thinking if I can just reach... Yeah, can just reach that archer. Uh, if she ends up coming back with enough MP, because 25% of that should be pretty close to one of her finishers anyway. Yeah, 42. 
Well, he doesn't have the breach yet, so that wouldn't necessarily help us out too much. All right, for the moment, uh, she's just going to go ahead and take a mend leaf. She's not really currently set up to do anything. With a few cards, with a few other things, it might get her somewhere. Uh, just one thing to know is that the debuffs are the things that are really letting the damage shine through. The actual cards themselves aren't really the thing doing it. The cards will intensify damage, but if you aren't getting it in the first place, uh, then it really won't be enough to fully push it through. Like, even if I ended up, uh, like, I ended up picking up a Fizz card on the Enchantress there, it won't by itself be enough to, uh, uh, to cause her to hit as hard as the other guy. Uh, so again, they'll basically be an increase to the maximum that they can do, but they won't be the full story, so to speak. Um, anyway, <clears throat> what we can do, though, is, uh, take his, uh, Fizz cards over here, and I believe he rolled his Phalanx, which should mean that, yeah, he's only taken, uh, he's only taken 61, but he's gonna go ahead and face punch this guy with the, uh, with the bomb. Now, Due to, the, due to fear and due to uh, him uh, having less skill uh, than the other guy. Uh, that's why we're going to be uh, seeing a case where he's not going to be doing as much damage, but he's still going to be doing a pretty impressive amount. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move you this way now. Uh, and we're once again set up with our avalanche. Uh, so he's enfeebled at this point. Or no, he actually shook off the enfeeble. Uh, due to the fact that his recovery time goes incredibly fast, uh, while he is incredibly weak to debuffs, he also shakes them off that much faster. Uh, just so you're aware. All right. So let's see. What do we have on you? We have a Blood Siphon. He is feared still, so this probably won't be anything super crazy. Uh, he's going to replace his crit card with another crit card, so that just kind of moves his uh, stack around a little bit. He's going to take a Blood Siphon just for the hell of it. If he crits it, great. It's just a little bit extra. Just something for him to do right now. Maybe tempt him to uh, attack those units nearby. Maybe just barely miss somebody else. It goes for the ninja instead. Perfectly fine. All right, so we still didn't get that breach, but we still can continue attacking with this crossbow here. 86 at this point, uh, due to the fact that he's at a higher elevation, uh, ranged attacks will be able to hit him a lot easier at this point. Uh, anyway, we'll continue on here. Go for a little bit of, uh, do we want to go for health steal? Not really. But uh, we can go for an MP steal, though. So the reason that we'd want to do this, because uh, this can potentially uh, crit as well, but we just want to kind of reduce his MP a little bit. Uh, it, we're gonna end up taking a net loss overall with that, but it is gonna give us a little bit. Uh, next up, we want to use a little bit of ease if we had it, but we don't, so we're just gonna go and uh, go for some heals instead. Let's see, uh, heal three, where's Denim at at this point? Uh, not gonna be anything super useful for Denim. Uh, we've got our 500 heal at this point, so just go ahead and heal uh, two Burb, three Furious. Might give him a way to uh, maybe do a little bit more on his turns when they come. All right, uh, we still haven't gotten the breach, uh, so the archer is going to sit here doing her thing. Uh, we're just going to let her continue charging up. She does have a pretty decent amount of range on her uh, basic attacks at this point. Can uh, just kind of short bow this guy from across the field just to drop a silence on him. He doesn't have any recovery moves, so there's not really anything too beneficial uh, to uh, uh, dropping that particular uh, thing right now. Um, but we can go ahead and use you to get our enchantress back up on her feet. So we'll go ahead and move you over here, resurrect, and we're currently not losing any uh, bleed out timers. Uh, we're going to have our enchantress uh, hopefully go and slow him down again, but we're still maintaining control. Uh, realistically, these cards, while they are speeding up this process, they are not the whole process, but the idea is just to, uh, to kind of keep pressure on the guy, uh, keep try to keep him stunned, keep him slowed, all of that kind of stuff. Obviously, uh, you can't always guarantee that everything is going to happen, but you can at least keep attempting uh, to throw that stuff out there uh, for whatever benefit it gives you. So he's going to go for the Exaltio in this case. The old Death Egg, as you do. Uh, he did manage to get almost the entire party with that particular one. So we are going to see a few numbers dropping down, but he's getting pretty close to finished, especially due to the fact that uh, the uh, the Hoplite over there is just sitting, you know, sitting pretty, taking no damage this entire time. He does not give a, you know, flying fudgery, as it were. Are we going to get that Breach? Didn't decide to roll that breach. Uh, you can roll a uh, warrior plus a, a nearby uh, uh, Volge unit uh, to go and uh, guarantee that uh, that breach a lot more effectively than uh, what we're doing here right now. But I figured we're already showing off enough stuff. I'm pretty sure most folks can kind of figure out to do something like that. Okay, so we're going to go over here. We're going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing with the bomb, as it were. Uh, just attack from an angle in this case. Just a uh, knight plus a uh, thundershot. 
and go ahead and punch him in that direction. Uh, go ahead and move over here, throw out our... We don't have an avalanche right now, so you just sit and wait, I guess. This is why casters are all well and good, but no amount of summons or magic stuff is really going to fix, you know, their whole situation when it comes to this part. Because they are getting drained of MP repeatedly, so there's that. Ooh, look at that, the hoplite actually took damage. It's amazing, that can actually happen. Alright, anyway, so we have you all well and set up. Uh, see if we can go ahead and just uh, do a little bit of this right here. Let's see, that's going to do 146, that's going to do 146 because it's basically equivalent in that case. Uh, Dark Weight would do a 35 and would slow him down. I think we're just gonna shadow pin him for the time being. Like, this is completely set up. The dagger by itself will be enough to, uh, get past his defenses to some degree. Um, and then we should hopefully, uh, see the, uh, hopefully sh see the, uh, the finale of this guy right here. That uh, looks like it's down to 74. That's fine. Fear will be like that. And then we'll, uh, go ahead and finish him off with a cudgel, hopefully. Or at least bonk him with a stick. Why not? At least go for this, uh, for the, uh, uh, for what's it? The thing with the stuff, with the, you know, whatchamacallit it. Go for the stun. There we go. That's, that's the word. Words are difficult. Uh, do we get, finish him off with the griffin then? That'd be kind of funny. Uh, but he is feared at this point, so obviously all of his numbers go bye-bye. I guess we're gonna finish him off with Kashua. Fine. Fine. Doesn't mean I have to be happy about it. Alright, so we got our avalanche. We go ahead and throw that over here. And that is the end of that. Just to uh, just to show you, no, it's not power that you're lacking for the finale. You can control this guy entirely with the debuffs. Like this is why intentionally uh, almost none of the actual uh, uh, none of the actual quote unquote powerful units were used. Even with Cashway, you might have noticed that despite her um, uh, her princess's whim skill being a solid counter to a lot of the stuff that this guy does at the very end there. Realistically, she could have been replaced with any basic cleric to probably better effect. Actually, I'm pretty sure I did in an, in an earlier version of this team setup. Um, but hopefully this has opened up a few ideas as far as uh, timing goes, as far as how some of these things are, you know, helpful in their own ways. And, um, yeah, that's about that. So, y'all have yourselves a good one. Take care, and I hope this was helpful. Later.